Can you use steroids safely? Is it possible to use it and not have any of the side effects or or defects of steroids? That's what we'll be finding out in this video. But let's start at the beginning. Steroids were first created in the 1930s. It was to promote muscle growth and enhance athletic performance. So it wasn't as mainstream as it is today, but it started in the 1930s. Ever since then, it, it, it has raised the bar on the performance and the, the level of bodybuilding and going to the gym and athletics. But it also raised the bar on the mortality rate because a lot of, a lot of people have passed away from steroids and or steroid abuse. The most notable people who have passed away from steroid abuse are people like Ziz, Rich Piana, Dallas McCarver, and Mike Menser. Now all of these deaths are not directly steroids fault but it's it was probably aided by steroids and then another one is Chris Benoit. It's, it's also uh, allegedly it's also something that happened with steroids and CTE but we'll get onto that later in the video. Wrestlers in the 80s and 90s also had multiple problems with steroids. It was like they were on the road 24-7, they, they never really slept, they keep going into other time zones, they, they got concussions, they wrestled every night, and then even what, they, their, their events ended after 11.30, so I think, I think that that also added to the steroids and the stuff, but this is what I want to discuss in the video, it's could these deaths of people, can they be prevented? Or can the, the steroid aspect of that be reversed? That's what we're going to talk about. Okay, but before we actually go into it, let's check what, what effects these steroids have on the body. It is a high amount, even for a short time. Could like make heart disease more aggressively, make you feel worse about your body, fat tissues to grow, gynecomastia, it can... It can stop your body from producing testosterone naturally. It can you there's a chance that you can have children and then you can have male pattern baldness. Case of Rich Piana and, and, and Dallas, their their hearts were bigger than normal. Like in Rich's his hearts was six hundred and seventy grams and the, the normal humans was is only three hundred grams. His heart was two times enlarged. And then it's for Dallas too. His autopsy revealed that Dallas had resembled a deflated rugby ball. Way bigger than the average cardio champions. So I think with that there was also traces of performance enhancing drugs. Most likely steroids. But I think the, the, the biggest cause of these deaths is what impact the steroid has on the heart. It, 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 it made his heart grow. And then because it, the heart grows it's, it needed more... More to pump, you needed more, and usually you would think, oh, bigger heart, it pumps better, you're gonna live longer, but no, that's actually not how it works. But what people don't know, this is not the side effect of regular, just normal steroids, this is the side effect of abusing steroids, like in Rich Piana's 5%, he said he will do anything to be the best, and what if anything is, you just... Take a whole bunch of steroids more than you're recommended by the doctor. The doctor tells you, hey, just take 500 milligrams and he takes 600 milligrams. I, I think that's what, that's what got to him. Now you can take a lot of substances to offset the, the de defects of normal steroids. But there's a difference when you, you take too much steroids and then you take too little of that. Because if you anything too much is not good. So even if you take the anti anti substances, they're also going to have a massive, massive, massive side effect on your body. In the wrestler's case, it is mixing, or in Chris Benoit's case, it's mixing the steroid abuse, CTE concussions, and just not living a normal life because they're on the road 24-7. Was I would have a flight every week at 5 or 6 a.m. out of Las Vegas which I would have to get up at 2 or 2.30 a.m. Bags were already packed the day or day, uh, two days previously, and get ready to go to the airport. 
uh, for a 5 or 6 a.m. flight to wherever the WWE live event was going to be. First thing here, too, now because of the WWE schedule and in the late night, getting out of shows very late in the, the late night drives with this, you're getting very little sleep already off the week because you're so used to going to bed at a later time. So typically would get between two to three hours, get up, get to the airport, and depending on where the show is at, would either have a direct flight, three, four, five hours, or a short connecting flight to somewhere like Denver or Chicago, and then carry on to the remaining flight, a connecting flight to wherever the show is going to be. Try to get whatever sleep you can get here on the airplane. Get into wherever the show is. You got to get your rental car, which you book in advance to talent. You always do that on your own. So to have a rental car ready to go that you would do usually on your day off, get that all set up for the week. Pick up your rental car. Hope that everything goes flawlessly. Usually, Sometimes doesn't always go that way, hit or miss, but get your rental car and depending on how much time you have, you either go find a gym or get food and find a gym or go get food and go to the destination where the WWE live event is going to be. Once at the show, do the show wherever you're at on the card, shower, get in your rental car and drives typically for WWE live events going and this was the schedule when I was there was five days a week or four days a week of constant wrestling. So you'd go from the live event and have typically a three to five hour long drive each night. Sometimes you'd get lucky, it'd be two, two and a half. But on average, you're looking at three to five hours most nights driving from, from point A to point B from WWE live event to WWE live event. Some talents would like to do the drive early in the morning, but most, myself included, made the drives the night prior. So after the show, whether, you know, depending on when you get out, 9, 10, 11, 11.30 at night, then make that long drive. You got to book a hotel prior, either at the show or, or when you get into your car, you book your, your hotel. Sometimes you do it on the way. It depends if you get tired, you only go three quarters. Usually they'll go the whole way book your hotel in advance, make your way to your hotel, and then get a good night's sleep as, as best as you can. And then the, every single night they're taking hits to the head, and back then there were chair hits. You can hit somebody with a chair over the head. They just did it at an angle. But let's go back to the beginning. The history of anabolic steroids can be traced back to as early as the 1930s. It was made from a male hormone. It was this one doctor, Dr. Zeigler. He created more selective form of it. And it was, it's named Dianabol. I think ever, a lot of people know what Dianabol is. It was an American physician. And the only reason it came out is because he went to Russia and then a Russian physicist. We, I don't actually have the name. But the physicist asked him, why or how, what do you give your, your, your clients? Or your your athletes and then he told them and then I think that's how it started to go out into the world. 1945. Ziegler went to Vienna with an American weightlifting team. There he met a Russian physicist who over a few drinks repeatedly asked what are you giving your boys? When Ziegler... Wait, let me put that in a Russian accent. What are you giving you? No, that's, that's Nigerian. Okay, wait. What are you... No. I'm just going to read it normally. What are you giving your boys? When Ziegler returned the question, the Russian said that his own athletes were being given testosterone. Returning to America, Ziegler tried weak doses of testosterone on himself. On the American trainer Bob Hoffman and on three lifters. John Grimek, Jim Park and Yas Guzara. All gained more weight and strength than in any training program would produce. So he said, so he saw actually, okay, if I take this, this program... Just a little bit of testosterone will get you more muscle than if you actually like eat right, sleep right, do all the things. A uh, sort of drug with, uh, without after fix and hit on an anabolic steroid, methandosterolone, dynable d -ball, made in the US in 1958. He gave it to the entire U uh, US Olympic weightlifting team in 1960 in Rome. But they still lost to the Soviets, so yeah, they still lost to Mother Russia. They will full up on vodka, that's probably. He gave up experimentation with athletes when he learned that some of who had taken 20 times the recommended dose of Dynable had developed a liver condition. So I think the problem comes when people or bodybuilders, they take more than they should. They started giving liver conditions when they took 20 times, so imagine how much 
Piana and Gerver. Imagine how much they took. He was quoted in Science in 1972, so I lost interest in fooling with the IQs of that caliber. Now it was about widespread as among <laughs> these idiots as marijuana. In later years, Ziegler regretted introducing AAS to athletes. He collected, but I wish to God, now I never done it. I'd like to go back and take that whole chapter out of my life. He developed the story Dynable. Now, I, I, I found no articles that said, oh yeah, you can, this is how we made it. But with the abusing steroids and the wrestlers, I think it's when you take the base level of steroids and you take the counter agent, it's fine. But when you abuse that and you, you, you can if you go to the extreme of steroids, it's not going to end good. Probably early deaths, like 50s, 60s, like Mike Menser, 49, and I think Rich Piano also 49, somewhere there. No, Rich Piano is younger. But I can confidently say, you can't save people who do that. If you overdose on steroids, that will never be... You can't, you can't fix that. But now the problem is these days with our our wonderful fitness community, if you don't take steroids or or just inject something into your veins like oil, you will you won't you won't ever 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 have a big brand on social media because they they will they will kids they will see you you're looking pretty normal not too big and then they will see the train twins next to you. And then they will see how this, these two guys are big. They may rather listen to these two guys than this guy. Because he's bigger. Okay, so uh, that's basically all I have for you guys. Enjoy.